Hey everyone, welcome to another Gato user interface tutorial. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on making a basic animation component so that we can animate our control nodes just a little bit easier. As always, you can grab the source files for everything that we're doing on my Patreon. Otherwise, let's get going. We're gonna be creating sort of an interface, a component setup to add animations a lot easier than creating a script for every single node that we want to animate. And by doing this, we're going to learn a little bit more about how these control nodes are working and also about tweens, which is a really quick way to add animation uh, with GDScript. So what we need to do is to create a new class. Let's go ahead and create a new folder here and we'll call this scripts and we'll create a new script. Now this script is gonna be called the animation component, and it's where we're gonna create our new class. Now if you've not created a, a class before, when you add a node, these are basically, well these aren't basically, these are classes. That's what these are. And you can extend these classes with your own classes or create your own. What we're gonna do is extend a node because we don't need anything fancy, and we're gonna create a new class. We do that by doing class name and then the name of our class, which will be animation components. Now, if I save that already, if I go to my create new node and I type in animation component, it's already there. We can already add that to our scene. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. So the idea behind a component is that instead of going into our, our button here and adding a new script, I can simply take a, an animation component, make it a child of that button, and it's gonna affect how that button operates. I don't have to do anything to the button. It's just adding the component. That's all you need to do. Now I've added it as a child, but obviously it's not gonna do anything because we don't have any code. We have no scripts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a few export variables. We need to have some things that we want to change and adjust so we can alter them whenever we load this component. The first one will be a from center boolean and we'll get into that in a minute basically the uh the way these buttons operate is the origin point in fact you can see it right here the origin point is up here in the top left now if we i don't think i can do it by hand but if i were to scale it no i can't do it by hand that's another point in fact let's go ahead and talk about that real quick when you have a control node that is a child of a container, the container controls the transform. It controls the size, it controls position, rotation, scale, all that stuff. Now you can't change it in the inspector, but you can change it in code. So that's important to note. So by, by adding an export variable to uh, make it from center, what we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this origin point um, right there. So when we scale it, it doesn't scale from the top left, it scales from the middle. So we'll have that export uh, from center, and then we'll have another export for the hover scale. That is how much we want to scale it when we hover. We're just gonna add a, uh, a scaling animation for our example in this video. And then another export variable for time, and that is gonna be how long that animation is supposed to take. And then another export variable for our transition type. We'll leave that. We'll leave that there for now, and we'll get back to that when we look at tweens. And it's unhappy about my vector. I didn't add a two. A vector vector means nothing. Vector two means something. So transition type. Let's comment that out. We'll come back to that because I don't want to jump into why we need that just yet. All right. Then we need a couple of variables here and that's going to be target so the target is going to be the node that we want to alter we're going to animate a node the target is that node and the parent the node that is the uh, the parent of our component that's going to be our target so we're going to set the target to our parent and then we need to get a default scale to return to okay so those are the variables that we need so in our ready function what we're gonna do first is set our target variable. And our target variable will be get parent. So already we have a reference to the node that we, we put our component into. And we don't need our process function 
And next, I'm going to create the the tween functions that we need, the animation functions. Um, so first, I need two different functions, one for when we hover onto the button and one when we hover off of the button. So I'll make a function on hover. We will void that because we're not returning anything in this function. And we're going to be adding a tween in here once we create that tween. Then we need another function called off hover. We'll void that and pass that. And then let's create the, uh, the function for our tween. This is where the magic will happen. So we'll add a function called add tween. Now within this, we're going to need a couple of parameters. The first will be what property we want to animate, then the value that we want to animate to, and then uh, how long that animation is, how long we want it to take to get to that value. And then we will void that. Now within this, we're going to create a tween. And the process to do that is to do tween, create a variable to put the tween in, get tree, and then create tween. So now we've created a tween. It's in our variable called tween. And now we need to tell it what property we want to actually animate. So we do tween, then tween property. And then we need the object that we want to animate. So in this case, that's the parent. That's what we've added to as our target. So we set it to target. Then we want to animate our property that we set and then our value. Then the value that we want to go to and then how long we want that animation to take. So that's the, the tween property function. That's what it needs. It needs what am I animating? What property am I animating? What am I animating it to? What's the value? And then how long should that animation take? And then the final part that we can add to this is a set transition. Now this is where the transition type up here is going to come into. So we've created our export variable transition type. We're going to plug that into here. And we need this to actually equal something. So within this set transition, there is a setting for the tween transition type. And this transition type is a enumeration. And there are all of these different transitions that you can use and uh, different values. In fact, there's a cheat sheet for these transitions that I'll put in the description so you can check them out on the, um, the Gato website. Now, in order to get those enumerations into our export, what we can do is use the tween and then transition type as the type. Now, if we save that, you'll notice over here in our transition type export, now we've got a dropdown. And that dropdown contains all of the different transition types that we can pick. We don't have to create our own enumeration. We don't have to list these out manually. And it's going to take that value and load it into our set transition. And it's going to work great. All right, now that we have set up our add tween, let's go back to our on hover. We're going to call that function add tween. And our property that we want to adjust is our scale. We want to adjust it to our hover scale using the time that we set. And we'll do the same thing when we hover off. I don't know if there's a better way to say off hover, unhover. We'll animate the scale. Now the value here, we, we don't actually have the default value. We need to save that, which we're going to do that in a second. But let's go ahead and put in default scale and then the, the time that we want it to animate. Now we have a function to animate, create a tween, to scale it up and scale it down when we hover and unhover. Now we have two things that we need to set up yet in order for this to work. The first is we don't know if we're actually hovering or, or not hovering because that information comes from the parent. It comes from our button and it comes from these signals over here. It comes from mouse entered, mouse exited. Our script has no idea when those are, are happening or when those are occurring. So we need to set those up. And then the other thing that we need to fix is our, our center issue. And we need to set our default scale. So let's do our setup first. 
we'll create a new function here and we'll call it setup. We will void that. So the first thing is our, our from center. So if from center, meaning if we want to um, consider the origin as the center of our object, then we want to take the uh, pivot offset, which is a, a setting within our button here. In fact, if I go into the transform, it's right here. We want to take that pivot offset and we want to set it to the target size. So the size of our target, in this case, it's 300 by 63. And we want to divide that by two. And that's going to give us the middle point of our button. And then the next thing we need to do is set our default scale to equal the current scale of our target. What this will do is fix our center issue. And it's going to save the, the scale that the button is when we load, when we first load that button. It's going to save that as the default scale so we can load it later on. So we've got that. Now we need to run this actually in a weird way. And it basically has to do with, I, I believe, a, a process of, of loading, how these load. If I just run this function, this setup function, this uh, pivot offset's gonna be off. It's not gonna be right. And I think it has to do with the, the button hasn't scaled um, to its size transform based on, on how these are loading within the tree. Uh, if you don't understand what that is, it, it's, don't worry about it. It's uh, not important because we're going to fix it. So what we need to do is we need to we need to run that setup function like very, very last after everything has loaded. So we can do that by using what is called the call deferred function. Now, what this does is it runs whatever uh, method we put in here when uh, everything else is done loading, like when there's a pause, when there's the frame is done which is what we want because when everything's done, it means everything is loaded. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna run setup um, within our call deferred function, and that's gonna fix this pivot offset issue. The last thing we need to do is to fix our signal issue. Now, what we can do is we can make connections. In fact, let's make a, let's make a function. We're gonna call it make connections which is actually, it's, that's pretty unclear. Uh, let's call it uh, connect signals, that's better. We're gonna connect these two signals, this mouse entered and mouse exited to our on hover and off hover. So we can do that by getting the targets, getting our mouse entered signal, connecting it, and then connecting it to on hover. And we do the same thing for mouse exited, connect it to off hover. Now you don't want the parentheses in there, you just want the name of the callable. All right, so now we've connected our signals, we need to run that in our get ready function. And we should be, we should be good to go. So let's set up a, an animation now. We've got a hover scale of, let's say, 1.5, 1.1, let's make it take, that's, that's too long, let's make it take 0.5 seconds and let's do the uh, transition back, all right? We'll save that and then we'll test, test our scene. And there you go. So just like that, we've created an animation for our hover on, hover off, and we can customize the, uh, the nature of that animation pretty easily. And if we wanted to animate our second button over here, we can do just that. So we can add a new animation component to our button. Let's do our settings, do a little bit faster. Maybe how about a elastic? Now this will be a different animation than the first animation we did. There's our first, there's our second one. Pretty cool. Now this can be, I think, expanded to, um, you know, entry animations, exit animations, a whole bunch of different animation types. And uh, I've got an idea about how to control that in a pretty easy way. So we'll keep building on this in the next couple of videos. And hopefully we'll have a, a nice animation system that we can use as we create our user interfaces going forward. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep creating.
All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider it a like and subscribe to the channel as we're going to be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.